In this lesson for our task 3C composition, we're going to look at these first ideas and making a good start and kind of just laying things out as we mean to go on. Now I've spent quite a lot of time thinking about the ideas that I want to look at and as I said in previous videos, I've also looked at lots of different songs that I'd like to kind of steal from and I've also looked at the words that that the Nelson that Nelson Mandela is saying, saying and kind of what what they're reflecting just so I get the mood of this piece right okay now I'm taking the direction of this kind of modern composition but I've actually gone down a song route as well so I've got a little bit of flexibility there to be creative and to also follow kind of what what I know and how to kind of how to develop these things so the first thing that I've done is come over to our notepad in Logic and Cubase has one, um, Pro Tools has one, all, all pretty much all the doors have these notepads. If they don't, there's no, there's no problem you using Word. I, I personally like to keep my notes inside of my project just so that I can flick to them and I can turn them off at, at the switch of a button. Okay, and I just I find it a really good way of working. So I've, so I don't need two two documents open at once. So the first thing I was looking at is what do the words mean? What do they mean to me? What do they mean to the audience? What's the kind of texture and environment that I'm trying to portray here? So they definitely mean hope. We're looking at this the strength of will, self-belief, this idea of a long journey that's kind of has its ups and downs. This philosophy of keeping going and not giving up, positivity even when it's at its darkest courage to think bigger than what you've got um, the beauty of your surroundings because he he talks about this mountain top and I always top of a mountain for me is is beautiful and it's kind of these these lush textures so we're looking at that as well we're also looking at things like being thankful freedom struggle the perception of freedom I think that's quite important here real um, realization and open-mindedness. These are just some of the words that myself and my students have, have come up with to kind of portray what we're trying to achieve. So this is quite good for our little mood board ideas. This is quite good to see where we're going. And I would definitely say to you, read the lyrics for yourselves over and over and just try and work out what it means to you or what's, what it should mean or what it's trying to say. The next thing in my mood board is the use of technology is quite a big part in this composition so we're just making sure that as we develop these things we don't forget what we're really trying to achieve so our, our mood is one looking at looking at these words is is one thing that we're trying to achieve the second thing is the technology so i've i've just put down okay the orchestration the instruments that i'm going to use the textures so i've just started a few notes after looking at thomas newman shawshank redemption soundtrack I definitely want these lush strings. I definitely want these pianos with these drowned reverbs. I then need to look at the chord progression. I've got some notes about the chord progression that I'm using. And it's really important from an early stage, you have this, this grounding of your key and your chord progression. If you don't have that at an early stage, it becomes very, very difficult to build your ideas. The minute you've got that, it's very easy to see what's working and what's not. Just knowing the notes that should be available to you at any given bar. So the next thing, we're definitely going to want to use these samples and effects and vocal samples. And I'm going to go down this route where I'm going to create some kind of melody. But I'm also going to over, overlay that with vocal samples from, from the words. Just to kind of portray these, these deeper meanings and add this kind of effect that pushes it just ever so much harder. Um, and pushes the point home really and that's why I've, I've gone for this modern composition rather than just the song we definitely don't want to use drum loops I want to build that momentum up we're going to want to use loops in general synthesis absolutely so we're going to have some synthesized sounds there we we definitely want to be using recorded audio so maybe some acoustic guitars some percussive instruments and I, I like recording my percussive sounds I just think you get so much more energy from that I looked at the um, Paul Simon Greystands album as well, and I like the idea of having this African chanting. It's going to be quite difficult, but what I thought to myself is if I create this simple melody, and then I use the flex time tools in in Logic and in Cubase, they've got slightly different ones. Although there's the Melodyne tool, and basically you can layer the MIDI sounds, but they're they're actually audio, so you can create these really nice lush. Um, harmonic textures. So I thought I might just do that. I might just create one tone 
and then put it across multiple samples for instance and that's the other thing you could also put that into a sampler so we might even try that put it into a sampler and try those those vowels or those syllables inside a sample and I think that'd be really good and that would definitely show the examiner that we understand the technology because we're, we're kind of creating these samples and then we're we're creating these complex harmonies and once again it comes back to understanding your chord progressions make sure you have this foundation that you understand the key that you're in and the chord progressions that you're using at any given moment okay um, similar with the effects that we're going to be using and the vocoders so dynamic process and that's just a given the mix for this piece needs to be very very solid and then we're going to use automation so the musical arrangement and I've just put down some simple notes of which I've started already with these strings and piano parts <coughs> excuse me so I just want this gradual build up just like we've got in the Shawshank Redemption textures I also um, want to use some of these words as phrases as well as building up the the harmonic textures and what I've done down here is I've just listed out from the lyrics themselves some of the phrases that I'm going to use at given points I've walked that long road to freedom I just thought that was really good and I, I can definitely see that I could probably make some kind of melodic phrase out of that um, and I might even use that in my my middle eight section or my bridge section here just to kind of emphasize the points um, for, for with freedom comes responsibility. I thought that was quite good. My long walk is not yet ended. Keeping one's head pointed towards the sun, one's feet moving to, moving forward. I thought these were just really powerful lyrics. And, I, and that's why I've honed in on these particular ones. So that's my first thing. Now, coming down to my, my initial thoughts, before I even got any of these musical ideas down, I have worked out everything or a lot of the things that are going to be critical as this piece moves forward. And it's easier to work these things out on a blank slate than it is later on when you've got all this stuff happening, okay? So the first thing I've, I've said to myself is, okay, the, the key that I'm going to at least start in, it might move away from A minor, but the key that I'm going to start in is A minor. It's a nice, simple key, basically uses all the white notes, so I'm pretty much <laughs> able to use anything that goes. I've also said, right, for the verse... I'm going to use this A minor, C, E minor, G phrase. And then there's there's the repeat here, but I'm just changing the, the G for the A minor at the moment. And I might develop this further. And that's absolutely fine if you do. These are just initial notes, just to keep us going. But remember, if you do change these things, just remember to update your notes. Just so if you start getting lost a bit later, you can come back to your notes and you can be, okay, that's where I'm at. The tempo I've decided is 100 BPM, so it's fast enough to add momentum, but slow enough to kind of make sure that I can get all my syllables out there, my vowels out there, my phrases can be kind of quite emotional and kind of thought-provoking, okay? So they're not too fast, that I just have to race them out, okay? I'm going to stick at a, um, a timing of 4-4. Four, four. I don't think I'm going to change. There might be a 2-4 passage, but pretty much I'm going to stay with 4-4. Four, four. You need to think about that if you want to if you want to change the momentum of your piece, whether it's going to stay at 4-4 or it's going to move on to something else. And then I'm going to develop these instrumentations. I'll just start with just a few. So that's where I am with my planning. Now, in my marker section, I've planned out all the all the areas. So I've got this intro, a couple of verses, this chorus, a little break, verse 3, chorus, bridge, and then I've got this kind of chorus into outro. Now this is very specific because this is only seven bars. So what I'm going to do, when it gets to about this point here bar 74 and you look at my time I've got five seconds to get to finish because remember this piece has got to finish at three minutes okay so I'm going to start my fade about here and then I'm just going to fade it out so when it gets to this bar here which is 76 exactly three minutes and I'm done so that was that's one of the reasons why you should plan this out in advance so you can actually see and by using the 100 BPM it fits in perfectly to three minutes as well which is just a stroke of luck really I didn't I didn't think of that I didn't plan that but it it worked out nicely so I don't have to kind of chop or change any of my bars around that may develop of course but but there you are okay I hope that was useful we're gonna make this quite a long video so if you want to pause now and get those things in just kind of note down the time that we're at because we're gonna now move on to the musical ideas 
as said previously, I wanted the first one to be this string texture. Now, orchestration is something I do quite a lot with my students, and I think it's so important that students understand how to orchestrate for, for strings and things and, and instruments that they're going to use. Now, for string sounds, you've got to think about your orchestra. Think about that there are kind of four parts to a, to a, to a string section in an orchestra. We have these low parts, and then we have these two mid parts, and then we have the high parts, okay? So violin, violin, viola, cello, okay? Something like that. Now, what a lot of my students do is they bunch all of the chords together. So you have these kind of root, root chords. So if it was playing a C, C chord, you'd have C, E, and G. And if you play that, and hopefully, I, could, I should be able to play that now on my keyboard. So here's the chord of C, okay? And that's just me basically playing C, E, and G, and it sounds nice, okay? But it sounds so much nicer when they're spread out. Now what I do is I take my initial chord, and then I move the notes up and down octaves. So I take, for instance, my C note, rather than putting it here, I put it all the way up there. I leave my E where it is, but I'll take my A from this point and put it all the way down there. And then if I want to double up on one of the parts, I'll either double up on the, the C, which is the root, or I'll double up on the fifth, which is the A. That's my general thing. Now listen to the same chord again, but this time, but this time spread out a little bit more, okay? So here we go, here's the spread. Here's what it sounds like when it's just playing in that root position. Okay, um, so hopefully that was okay. Hopefully you, you kind of see that orchestration working out and it, and it does make a lot of sense to do it this way and it makes for these really lush strings. So once again, if we come down to my notepad, the chords that I'm using in this intro and this verse are A minor, C, E minor, G, A minor, C, E minor, A. So let's just play that so you can have a look at the orchestration as it, as it goes through. Let me get rid of my notepad. And here we go. Now if you look at that, I mean that's beautiful, I love that, I think that sounds so nice. But if you look at it, that's how I've orchestrated it. So if you look at my first chord on my notepad, a minor and if you work through these notes you'll see that's an A minor now the thing that I like to do is not have it so that it goes A minor and then on to C so you have a break in the notes here so rather than do that I've actually kept those notes going so that you don't have these breaking notes so you get these long sweeping notes and that's a really good technique to make sure you kind of just have these long sweep notes rather than these kind of constant breaks that would sound like this Okay, so rather than that, you get this kind of thing. Okay, and that, that just sounds so much nicer and so much more flowing. You obviously do have to change some of the notes, and sometimes they don't just fit in. But if you find notes that can just keep going, you should make sure you do that. So we have our A minor here, we have our C here, we have our E minor here and our G there, and then I've done this loop. But rather than cut the loop, which I would normally do, I've actually done it over an eight bar phrase to keep those, those mom that momentum going. I think that's pretty much all I have to say about that particular one, but as it gets to the verse, so that I can put the lyrics over the top, I've taken it down to just the root notes of each of the chords, okay? I've done a bit of clever stuff there, but basically just going down to the root notes so that I can include this piano same again, I've just come up with this nice little pattern on the piano, and they're basically the same chords, so we're looking at the same chords, but this time there's just a little bit more rhythm in it, but I've created myself a bass where I can eventually put my vocals on the top, so just have a look, we'll take it from here, we'll just have a look at the piano, then I'll let you guys get on with your piano parts, and uh, or whichever parts you want to put in.
and that's quite nice did you hear that the way it dropped off there so basically there's even more space for that vocal to have some kind of impact that's all I have to say in this lesson. Next lesson we're going to move on to a few more instruments, try and pad out some of these other sections because we are making we are looking for variation as well. We wouldn't want it to sound all the way the same, but already you can see there's a lot of variation just in these parts here alone. We will look at different chord a different chord structure for our chorus, a different chord structure for our, our break, so we can develop those areas even further. We'll look at percussive parts and move on. But that should give you so many thoughts for to fun pushing your own piece forward um, and get these notes down get these ideas down but understand how you're developing them so that later on when you have to come and change them it makes it a lot easier okay we'll see you in the next lesson